In the next few minutes, we're going to outline several of the factors that can influence the strength of a barrier layer of surface horror and its likelihood being triggered. These factors include the shape of the crystals, hardness of the underlying layer, change in grain size, slope angle, and snow climate. Of the various shapes of crystals that Simon mentioned, we're going to focus on the broad forms. Why focus on broad forms like wedges? Because when the failure layer of a slab avalanche consists of surface ore, it is usually wedge-shaped crystals. At least that is true in the Columbia Mountains of Western Canada. During the many fracture line profiles of slab avalanches that, that released on surface ore, ASAC researchers most often found layers of wedges and never found layers of narrow surface ore crystals like needles, spikes, or sheaths. Of course, just because they didn't observe any slab avalanches that released on narrow forms of surface ore does not mean that it doesn't happen or can't happen. Narrow forms, like needles, allow precipitation particles from the next snowfall to get between the surface ore crystals. The precipitation particles will bond to adjacent surface ore crystals and likely add to the strength of the surface ore layer. In contrast, broad forms like wedges are thought to act like umbrellas, reducing the number of precipitation particles that fall between and bond to the surface ore crystals. While the umbrella effect is plausible and mentioned in a few research papers, it has not been verified with field studies. Some practitioners like to focus on the spaces between surface ore crystals. They suspect that the bigger the spaces, the more the layer persists and is likely to propagate cracks. Now, let's look at how a buried layer of surface oil crystals bonds with adjacent layers. Over time, increased load from snowfall pushes surface oil crystals into the layers above and below, as shown by this animation. For wedge-shaped crystals like these, the narrow bases are expected to penetrate faster than the wider tops of the crystals. Penetration into adjacent layers will add to the strength of the surface oil layer. By going back to the same study plot 12 times in the six weeks after a layer of surface ore was buried, ASARC researchers identified this strength increase. In the same set of observations, the thickness of the layer decreased like this. This supports the concept that the penetration of a surface ore crystals into adjacent layers is a process that increases the strength of a surface ore layer. After surface ore layer fractures in a snowpack test, the crystals are usually attached to the bottom of the block. This implies the bonding at the narrow base of the surface or crystals is often weaker than the bonding to the layer above. When a surface or layer forms on a hard layer, like a melt-freeze crust, the penetration into the lower layer and associated strength gain can be much slower. The left animation shows faster penetration of the crystals into a soft underlying layer and the right animation shows slower penetration into an underlying crust. We expect that slower penetration into the crust will mean that the surface or layer is slower to gain strength and be prone to crack propagation for longer. By going back to a north facing slope six times over six weeks, ASARC researchers observed a surface or layer gaining strength. During the same period, the layer was thinning. Also during the same six weeks, they measured the surface hoar layer on a nearby south-facing slope where the surface hoar layer was on top of a sun crust. As shown by the red lines, the surface hoar layer was slower to thin and slower to gain strength on the south slope. How common is it to see trends like this on a north and south-facing slope? In our experience, it is not that common, which suggests it is easy to be surprised by a surface hoar layer on a south-facing slope. Numerous field studies have shown that if you return to the same site and extract crystals from the same surface or layer, you see smaller crystals over time. Well, that's not quite true. The extracted pieces of surface or crystals get smaller over time. This is likely due to the surface or crystals penetrating and bonding to the adjacent layers more and more over time. In this example, the crystals were 10 to 20 millimeters four days after burial, 79 days after burial, the carefully extracted pieces were only 6 millimeters in size. And they don't look like complete crystals from the first observation. They look like pieces of surface ore crystals. But this is just how one layer of surface ore changed over time. So let's look at the trends ASARC researchers observed in 19 layers of surface ore in the Columbia Mountains. Over periods of 5 to 14 weeks, they found layers containing initially larger crystals were more persistent, Surface or layers 
gradually gained strength as load increased over time. So when additional snowfall was slow, sometimes just dribs and drabs, the buried surface ore layers were quite slow to strengthen. Strengthening of layers was associated with thinning of layers. Smaller pieces of surface ore crystals were extracted over time. Have you ever triggered a woomph on a particular layer of surface ore after the last reported avalanche on a slope on the same layer? Well, that's my experience. The question is why do surface ore layers seem to stabilize faster on slopes than on flats? Some researchers think that as creep tilts surface ore crystals on a slope, there are more contacts, which results in more bonds between crystals. This would tend to strengthen the surface ore layer more on steep slopes than on gentle terrain. Does this fit with your experience? Next, let's look at how snow climate, specifically snowpack thickness, can affect crack propagation of surface ore and other persistent weak layers. Where the snowpack is thick, faceting is rare more than a few centimeters below the snow surface. As soon as the first snowfall becomes slabby, it is usually harder and stiffer than the surface ore layer. Weeks later, the slab layers are substantially harder than the surface ore layer, which favors crack propagation. Now consider a thin snowpack where faceting is common in early and midwinter. The slab is initially slightly harder than the surface ore layer. Weeks later, the surface ore layer is a little harder and the overlying slab has not changed much. The hardness difference is less favorable to crack propagation than where the snowpack is thick as shown on the left. To answer question two from the case study, factors that contributed to the propagation that surprised these skiers include, first, the slab was 70 centimeters thick and 40 centimeters of the slab was at least medium or one finger hard. Second, there was a substantial difference in hardness between the lower slab and the surface ore layer. Now that we know more about these factors from a thick snowpack, a 160 meter wide propagation should not be surprising. 